September 26th, 2021. Emil Smith-Rowe and Bakayo Saka's names are sung from the rooftops as Arsenal put their early season troubles behind them in a memorable 3-1 victory over their bitter rivals Tottenham at the Emirates Stadium. Despite Saka probably being seen as the bigger talent at the time, the names were inseparable in and out of the charts around the club and Smith-Rowe's star was rising rapidly, finishing the campaign as Arsenal's second highest scorer, making his first appearances for England's senior team and playing over 2,000 minutes across the season. Now, just two years on from that day, Emil Smith-Rowe's future at Arsenal seems to be hanging in the balance. With two games left of the season as of recording, he's played 225 minutes in all competitions, equating to less than two and a half games of football. One assist, zero goals. It seems his development is stalling, and many Arsenal fans are advocating for him to leave, a seemingly impossible turnaround from that gorgeous late summer's evening in September 2021. There is, of course, some important context. Smith Rowe finally had surgery on a growth related groin issue he'd been dealing with for a number of years after suffering a tear in Arsenal's 3 1 loss to Man United back in September 2022. The recovery time ruled him out for 11 league games. However, he made a welcome return at the end of Arsenal's 2 0 win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in January, and despite a minor three-game setback, he's been available for selection since the Aston Villa game in mid-February. Since then, supposedly fully fit, though there may be information that we don't know, Arteta has been reluctant to use him. Emil has only made an appearance in six of the subsequent 14 games. He's also usually one of Arteta's last substitutes when he does come on. Only coming off the bench against Everton, Bournemouth, Palace, Leeds, City and Brighton, he has never been the first change, apart from when he came on for Trissard against Bournemouth, and even then, he didn't complete the game. Additionally, there's been an interesting tone shift in the way Mikel Arteta has discussed Emil Smith-Rowe in the last few months. In December 2022, Arteta referred to him as a huge talent, whose contribution in the second part of the season was going to be key to the team. Going further back to when Smith-Rowe was handed the 10 shirt in the summer of 2021, Arteta praised his desire and attitude explicitly for demanding a shirt number with that kind of history attached, and spoke further about his hunger, attitude and mentality in an interview with the club media. It seemed to be Arteta's main praise for Emil his attitude. But that messaging has changed. In March this year, Mikel said he needs to prove it, how much he wants to win and how much he's going to contribute to this team to be better. Then in April, when asked about Smith Rowe's lack of game time, Arteta said, In football, it's not about what you've done a year or a month ago. It's about what you do now, what you did yesterday, and what you're going to do tomorrow. The player has to have that mindset, and the contribution has to be now to the team to make us better and win games. A far cry from his glowing reports in 2021. Reading between the lines, it sounds as though Emil has taken his foot off the gas a bit in training. We can't know that, and that is conjecture. We only read what we read, but his appearance numbers don't lie. I don't want to cast aspersions on a character in person that I don't know. And by Smith Rowe's own admission, I think some of this can be put down just to a particularly tough season after such a high last year. Hopefully, Emil can put it behind him and return to preseason for a fresh start. In fact, last summer, he did his own pre preseason, intending to be in the best condition he could for the start of this campaign. I don't really go in for the idea that he isn't right mentally on any kind of long term basis. If he wasn't mentally up for it, he wouldn't have come through the ranks, signed professional terms, and signed his latest contract. We have to remember this is a guy the club knows very, very well. If you'd like some in-depth analysis of Smith Rowe's minutes this season, you can check out the bonus content to this video, where I talk specifically about areas of potential improvement, his development, and his in-game contributions, as well as much, much more. Turns out my cat wants to be a patron. Yeah, three pounds a month. Get access to that and loads more, all for just £3 a month on Patreon or by clicking join on the link below. I actually think Smithrow is more a victim of timing. Ironic, really, considering it played such a huge part in his development. Arsenal's deep lack of creativity and a terrible run at the end of 2020 came at a good time from his perspective and was the catalyst for Emil's breakout game on Boxing Day 2020. Because I also don't think it's as easy as just pushing harder. Sometimes the team is in a phase where it just doesn't suit you. In late 2020, he was exactly what it needed. And right now, he just isn't. You can't push harder for a slot in a team that doesn't have a place for you. This season, as Zinchenko has moved inside in build-up, the zones Smithrow thrived in last year, as seen by his heat map here, have become compressed and congested. Zinchenko's positioning has shifted Xhaka further forward, and all of this has called for a more touchline winger like Martinelli to hold with. That's just not Smithrow's game. He is not a touchline winger. 
Couple that with Martinelli's explosion this year, and Smith-Rowe has had a huge task to get into the team. Compare Smith-Rowe's heat map from last season and Martinelli's from this season, and you can see the problem. They're just doing different jobs. And his other, perhaps more natural position, depending on your viewpoint, in as either the left or right eight, isn't a great fit in the current dynamics either. He doesn't offer the passing volume and cuteness in the final third that Odegaard does, nor the anticipation, personality, and physicality of a Granite Xhaka. From there, the natural question comes up the one that has plagued Smith Rowe for years at this point. What is his best position? But for me, that's the wrong question to ask. We need to ask what his profile is and therefore what role he's best suited to in the team. Smith Rowe, to me, has a number of strengths. He's taller and more physically imposing than you think, a magnificent ball carrier from deep, an excellent close combination player, times his arrivals and third man runs very well, he's a big goal threat, and he thrives with the grass in front of him. He's not terrific out wide 1v1, nor is he particularly quick or good at rolling defenders, so I'd move him away from the exterior areas of the team for now. The question is, on any given day, where do you want that profile? For now, I don't think it starts in our best 11. But just as we evolved away from Smith Rowe, we may evolve back towards him. With Xhaka leaving, we may now see a setup with Rice in the six in certain games, ask him to slot in in the build up on the left of the three, as he's played as a centre back before, and in that case, we may play with a wide fullback who pushes up like Tierney does. There may then be a role for a more attacking minded interior eight in there, like a Smith Rowe or Fabio Vieira. We also might see games where we play with Rice and Partey to add some physicality and sit Erdegaard down as we soak up pressure in a tough away match. Who might we then want with some central running power combining with our forwards who excels on the transition? I think it could very well be a Mill Smith Rowe. I'm not suggesting any of these are going to happen. I'm just suggesting there's a very strong chance that the team isn't going to look the same as it did this year. In fact, without Xhaka, it won't be the same. And we may find that Emil's skill set fits right in in certain games. Especially with Champions League football on the horizon, he may prove very useful next season if he can stay fit in a number of positions across our front five. Things change very quickly in football. A loss of form for even a few games could be Emil's big opportunity. Kevin Campbell recently said he'd heard rumours that Emil is learning a new position. Maybe we'll see the fruits of that next season. The final thing to say, and really the crux of it all, is this. Development is never linear. Your brain doesn't stop developing until around your mid to late 20s, according to the National Institute of Health, and your body is ever-changing. Smith Rowe is 22. He's still very young. Because of his inextricable link to Saka, we naturally compare. But the Bakai Sakas and Cesc Fabregases are once-in-a-generation players, and Emil has a lot to contribute, even if he's taken a step back this year, and even if he isn't Bakai Saka. No one ever asks what position Phil Foden or Bernardo Silva are. Now, they're more talented players than Smith Rowe, but Pep uses them for different functions against different opponents. Different games require different profiles, and we don't have another Smith Rowe in the squad, that's for sure, as his skill set is very unique. Players are human beings. They go through hard times, and Smith Rowe is no different. Let's give him our love and support as a fan base, and let's hope we see him out on the grass doing what he does best next season. However, that said, with the sale of Xhaka, we may be seeing just what we've called for as fans, ruthlessness. Supposedly, we're targeting two midfielders in the upcoming summer window. Do I think Smith Rowe has a lot to contribute? Yes. Can we improve on him? Probably yes too but it's not at the top of my to-do list. Signings tell you a lot about what the manager thinks of his current options, and Vieira, the new Nelson contract offer, the Rice and Caicedo links, the Mount links, Trossard's arrival, none of it all goes particularly well for Smith Rowe. But it remains to be seen, and it may be a case of if the money's right, we accept it, and if not, we don't. Sometimes though, you do have to kill your darlings. But for now, Smith Rowe is an Arsenal player and I'm in no hurry to change that. In my opinion, he still has a role to play, even if right now his path is a little unclear. We've seen plenty of remontadas in recent years. Let's hope Emil Smith-Rowe can be yet another one.